everyone. Welcome back to Moose Villa Off Grid. This is going to be a review of my Grizzly Cubic Mini Wood Stove. I've had this for about three years now and I've had my tiny house located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan for one of those years and I've had it located in Northwest Wyoming during two of those years. And both of these places are known for having cold winters, pretty extreme for what some people would consider Upper Peninsula of Michigan we would routinely have in excess of 300 inches of snow and of course here in Northwest Wyoming it is not unusual for the temperature to get down to minus 30 or even less than that I have seen it on occasion closer to minus 40 here the brand cubic mini is made up in Canada so you would expect it to operate pretty well in these kind of extremes and it's basically made for smaller places tiny houses, one room cabins, things like that. I think it's rated at, at maybe four or five hundred square feet. My tiny house is 24 feet by eight and a half feet wide and I have a loft and it's roughly 10 feet tall on the inside. Now here I'm just cleaning the glass. I don't usually do this but it seemed like a good day to do it while I talked with you about the, the wood stove. The stuff I'm using is Rutland glass cleaner. Now you can clean the glass just by using some of the soot out of the pan in here in your wood stove and I have done that before but to me it doesn't do quite as good a job. I like to look at the fire and having this clean helps me look at the fire. That's not perfect but it will do for now. So the Cubic Mini is made out of plate steel. It is not made out of uh, cast iron like some of the other stoves like Vermont castings and uh, the Squirrel and some of the others. So it will not hold the heat quite as well as those stoves that are made out of that heavier material. And you'll notice that my logs are relatively small. My hand is average size for a man and you can see it's not as long as my hand. Roughly five or six inches. Now the recommended way to start a fire is to start off with really small sticks and whatnot. And I agree with that philosophy, but usually I'm in a bit of a hurry. So I use these fire starters. And these are basically compressed uh, wood, chopped up wood like sawdust, and impregnated with a little bit of wax or paraffin. I find that they burn for oh, roughly five minutes or so, and they burn nice and hot. 
and by the time they're done burning they have managed to light the bigger pieces of wood. So that's all I do is basically light this little uh, fire starter and then I put it under the logs like I have there. I have two down on the bottom and a couple stacked up on top. And it won't take very long for that to light. Then I leave the door cracked open a bit so it can get some extra oxygen. On occasion if I have a couple pieces of clean trash I will add those to my my wood stove but by and large I just use the wood that I have. It'll take a good two or three minutes for that to light and then once that starts to burn real well I'll close the door and it will have heated up the flue pipe enough that it will draw the air up through the flue. So that's the reason you leave the door open at first is there's cold air coming down the flue and you need to be able to get the warm air going up into the flue. And then that way you can close your door without extinguishing the fire you just started. As it starts to warm up I close the door just a little bit more and a little bit more and that causes it to pull air in and the fire begins to burn hotter. Now I've got my stove mounted up on a little bit of a platform. I'd say it's uh, five inches tall and then I've got this fireboard that I purchased at one of the big box stores here underneath the stove to protect everything. You'll also notice I use these baby wipes to clean up. You could use anything you want, but with a stove you always get a bit of dirt and stuff around and I like to keep my house relatively clean and when I'm done with the baby wipes I can just throw them into the stove and they'll eventually just burn up and then I'm left with a clean area. Now all that smoke pouring out there will go up the chimney if I close it just the right amount. You'll see on top of the stove there's a little fan and this is one of these fans that is operated by heat. It has no cord attached to it at all. And once the top of the stove gets up to two or three hundred degrees it will start to turn on its own. I do also have a thermometer up here on top of my stove. And once the stove begins to heat up it will tell me the temperature of the top of the stove. Now one thing you will need when you have a wood stove is some place to store your wood inside. A little stove like this will not use a lot of wood in comparison to the big stoves but it does use a lot of small pieces. And I find that with a full firebox like this, if you choke it down a little, little bit by adjusting the dampers, a fire will last anywhere from two and a half to three hours. And I work during the day, and so I typically use the stove first thing in the morning to warm the house up before I go to work. And then I have a propane heater in the house that is used as a backup. And while I'm at work, if the house gets below 45 degrees, the propane heater will come on. Then at night, when I come home, I typically come home around 6 to 6.30. I'll crank up the wood stove again 
and I'll get it going good and warm so that it has the entire house heated up to 75 to 80 degrees and I'll run that until I go to bed at uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock or something like that. And then I won't tend the heater at all while I'm sleeping. I'll just uh, cover myself up and keep myself warm like that. And I find that the heater, once it gets the inside of the house warm, the walls and everything like that, that it tends to keep the inside of the house about 50 to 60 degrees until I wake up in the morning. And even though that is a little bit chilly, when you first wake up in the morning, it's not terribly bad and it's an easy process to come down here and start the stove again. And you can see we've only been operating now for a couple of minutes. This video is real time and it's burning really well. If you listen carefully when I close the door almost all the way, it really starts to pull the air in and the fire starts to go much more vigorously. Okay, it's got the flue pipe heated up enough that it's drawing, so I can close the door all the way. And we'll give this a good 20 minutes or so to burn down these logs that are in there. And then we'll add some more logs and we'll fill the firebox up. And then that will be all that I need for in the morning. And then, of course, I'll go off to work, and when I come home in the evening, I'll crank it up again, and I'll go through maybe two or three fireboxes full of wood to get the house completely heated up again. And I find that this works very well for me. Now, Cubic Mini does sell their own flue pipe that... They mark it, it's a stainless steel, I think it's a double wall flue pipe, and they recommend that the flue pipe goes through the roof. Well, I wasn't in favor of putting mine through the roof. I've got mine going through the wall, and so I didn't purchase the flue pipe that they sell. I purchased a flue pipe by either Duravent or Selkirk that's made for pellet stoves. And this is a, a double-walled flue pipe, and it comes in galvanized steel. And I just got some black high-temperature paint, like they paint engines with and things like that. And I painted it flat black. And maybe once a year or so, I go back and I retouch the flue pipe where some pieces are rubbed off or something like that. And I find that it works fairly well. Now, it does tend to cool the pipe down by having the two elbows, the one elbow going out the wall and the next elbow going up the wall. So it does tend to accumulate a little bit of creosote. In northwest Wyoming, the wood that we have available to us is pine and poplar and cottonwoods and things like that. And that tends to be the kind of woods that build up creosote more frequently than the hardwoods, like you have up in the northern hardwoods of the Upper Peninsula, up in the New England states, and things like that. Now, when I was up in the Upper Peninsula for that year that I had the stove, <clears throat> I was burning hardwoods, and I did have less of an issue dealing with creosote. I only had to clean the pipe out uh, maybe once every four to six months, you know, once during the middle of the winter. Here living in northwest Wyoming with all of these conifers and softer type of hardwoods like the poplars and cottonwoods, I find that I have to clean my pipe out about once every two months. But that is not a hard job at all. 
I've got a brush and a couple extension poles and all I do is take down this one piece of pipe that is inside here that's roughly three and a half to four feet long and it comes off with the elbow. I take that outside and I brush it out and then from the outside of the house I have a T outside and I just run the brush up through the bottom of the T and all the way up to the chimney stack and I find that that works very well and it keeps the pipe cleaned out. I do clean out the horizontal section that goes through the wall. Basically all I do is take my brush and put a bag around the portion of the pipe and run the brush through and all the bag does is help to keep things from falling all over the inside of the house. You can see the fire has gotten started real well in here and it's burning and all of that was started with large pieces of wood like you saw me add to the inside of the firebox and that one little cube of a uh, fire starter. Now I do have a couple pieces of paper in there, the baby wipes and stuff like that that I use to clean off the top of the hearth but those baby wipes really aren't helping very much because they're moist and wet and it takes almost as much energy to burn them as it does to do anything else. Okay, so the fire's been burning about 20 minutes now and you can see maybe more like 30. You can see that it's burned down well. This was at full power not choked down at all. So now I'm going to add a nice full load of wood in here and this will last about three hours. We'll give it a chance to start burning well and then I'll choke down the air intake on the bottom and the front intake over here on the side once it starts going well. Uh, you'll see right next to my stove I have a little can and in this can is where I store my ash and then when this gets full I take it out and I add it to the compost pile. They do sell a tool kit for the stove that includes a little shovel and a poker and a pair of tongs but I find this used kitchen spoon works just fine for my use. So that's what I use instead of the tool kit. Since we're down here already, we take a look at some measurements. I know you can go to the factory and look up the measurements on the factory website, but I'll just go ahead and do it here anyway. So we're about 13 and a half inches high from the ground, and that includes the feet that are on the bottom. And if you don't include the feet, it's 10 inches. Now side to side, we're about ten and a half inches and then you have a nice flat plate on top here. And this flat plate is ten inches. It is still hot so I need to be careful. By thirteen inches. So it's large enough to put a small pot or pan on there in order to do some cooking. Let's see how deep the firebox is. The firebox is nine inches deep. Now let's take a look at the opening of the firebox and how big that is. We're looking at five inches top to bottom and 
and six and seven eighths side to side. So that gives you an idea of why the size of logs that we cut for this are roughly six inches or less. Because the inside dimensions of this is a little less than seven inches from the back to the front. So as you can see I'm cutting logs that are anywhere from five to six inches. Some of them a little bit bigger, some of them a little bit smaller. That was five and a half. That was almost five and three quarters. So that's typically the size of the log that I'm cutting to go inside this firebox. And you can see this has been burning here for a couple hours. I had to go across town to be able to pick up a few things. So I've been gone from the wood stove for a while and it's still burning quite hot and quite warm and it's not throttled down at all. So it would have even more coals in it if I had it throttled down a little bit. It's getting warmer outside so I'm going to go ahead and let the wood stove burn out. It's about 52, 53 degrees outside. So we'll let this go ahead and finish up. So what are my impressions of the Grizzly Cubic Mini wood stove after three years of use? It's a good little wood stove. It does the job that it's designed to do, which is to heat up your house. As I mentioned, it does not hold the heat as long as a cast iron type of stove would do, or one that was made out of thicker metal. But it does do a very good job of heating the house up, and it's appropriately sized for a tiny house or a small cabin. Now my house overall I guess is in the 200 square foot range and I think it would work fine for probably up to 250 or 300 square feet. Past that I think it would struggle a bit because it's just not large enough for a much larger space. But for my space it does very well. Now my house is very well insulated and so it tends to hold the heat very well. And as I mentioned, I just run it up until I go to bed and then it goes out on its own. And then the accumulated heat inside the structure, inside the house, the walls as they warm up and stuff like that, pretty much hold the heat until the following morning when I get up and crank it up again. This wood stove is a little bit cheaper than some of the others, like the Vermont castings, the Squirrel, the Morso, and things like that. Now, of course, the flue pipe and stuff is going to be the same price no matter what, because uh, all of them are going to use some type of double-walled or triple-walled flue pipe in order to go outside your house. So the stove itself, I think I paid around $600 for it. And if you watch the specials and stuff, you can also probably pick it up for that cost. And I did a video once about the cost of the flue pipe and the exterior thimble and things like that. And that ran about seven or $800 as my memory serves me. So it wasn't cheap either. But overall, the stove is working very well. The firewood doesn't cost me anything. So now that I've paid for the stove, the stove pretty much pays me back every day I use it. I'm very pleased with it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you would, please hit the thumbs up icon if you have enjoyed the video. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet to our channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much and we'll see you back here again very soon. Goodbye.